Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Dust Presents. I'm your host, Brent Butler, and today we've got Noah Khan. Hello, thanks for having me. Absolutely, dude. Uh, your, uh, your, your debut LP, your full album, the first one, the, the big boy. It's exciting, scary stuff, man. So this is my life's work. You work on it. All these songs have been written over the course of 22 years, so. Uh, I mean, they all kind of started when I was like 15, but you know what I mean, so it's exciting. We'll see. Wow. And this is, so the album's called Busy Head? Yeah, Busy Head. What's that mean? Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. Uh, when I was in high school, I got into trouble for smoking weed and drinking alcohol underage. And, you dog. Oh, God. What can I say, man? Oh, r rabble rouser. What can I say? Here. I think the personality, oh, uh, was getting in trouble. And basically in my town, uh, we were lucky enough to have a program called Diversions, which is when you get arrested, you can go to a Diversions program. You go to counseling, you go to like mandatory drug and alcohol therapy stuff, and Fine. they clear it from your record um, until, they're, until you're 18 or something like that. So I went to Diversions, and they t send you to a counselor, and they ask you a bunch of risk factors about mental illness and drug abuse. And if you check out a certain amount of the boxes, they put you into the busy head category, and I checked out like every single risk factor. And uh, I was a busy head category, and I thought that spoke a lot to kind of who I was at the time, and uh, it spoke a lot about my personality, and I wanted to... I thought it was a, it's a nice way to uh, kind of encapsulate who I was, and this record is kind of a little picture of myself. So That is, like, legit the most interesting answer I think you possibly could have given. I know. It's a nice story, man. It's a nice story. I have no, for album two, it's going to be a really underwhelming title, because that's, like, the coolest thing ever. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting story, and I like, I like the title a lot. This is a follow-up to, I believe, your EP that came out previously um, okay. and, and did extremely well. Uh, that or the first single, I guess, was 2017, Young Blood. Yes. And how did that come about? Well, so basically, I got, I got a record deal when I was 18, and I thought that I was going to be, like, releasing music the next day, and I'd be hanging out with the Jonas Brothers and shit, and, you know, be, like, partying with Dua Lipa or whatever, and that's just not how it works at all. I, I uh, ended up having to spend, like, a year developing my kind of songwriting and kind of making myself um, more prolific and... It was hard, and there was a lot of free time and a lot of kind of lack of structure, and I just wanted to write a song in that kind of weird space so I could uh, remember how I felt when things start, finally started to happen for me, and uh, Young Blood kind of encapsulated the beginning of my journey. Have you since hung out with the Jonas Brothers and or partied with Dua Lipa? No, but I DM them every day, so I feel like that's just kind of a similar. They're big fans of the show, so I have a feeling. If you're watching this Jonas Brothers, please let me come over to your house and hang out with you. Yeah, and Dua Lipa. And Dua Lipa as well. You know, if return you return some of my, my letters. Yeah. Please. Yeah, come on. You know? You know. Just a normal guy. And so then you had Young Blood, and then I believe it was the song I Heard Somebody. I heard Somebody. <laughs> I heard somebody, I released as a single, and um, it was just me and the, and the guitar uh, on the track, and it was a single, and then Julia Michaels reached out to me about cutting a vocal on the song and making a duet. So we re released it in my EP, uh, the Heard Somebody EP. And, Kind of her contribution to that song really transcended the whole record and um, really changed my life. And the song became uh, pretty globally successful. It was a hit in Australia, which was crazy. And, and why Australia? Aren't you from Vermont? Yeah, very inconvenient. Very inconvenient to have a hit in Australia. I was hoping I'd have a hit in like Montreal or something like that so I could just like drive up the border. But went really big in Australia, which I'm endlessly grateful for. And uh, went to Australia like four times last year. So a lot of travel, but uh, it was cool. And I, I don't know why things happen the way they do, I think, with Spotify and streaming and like, certain parts of the world that have access to your music. And, and Australia is pretty cool. That's Australia really is cool. an amazing, it's an amazing country. It's so beautiful and uh, we've really been blessed to be able to go there so many times. Do you have a, you have a favorite city there? I love Melbourne. Um, Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne. I'm never going to say it right. I, I had a friend from there in college and I, I got in a lot of trouble. A lot for of saying Melbourne? It looks yeah. like Melbourne. You know? That's what it looks like, but Australians, they don't, they don't care what something looks like. I was in Melbourne or Melbourne and uh, I just love, we were right in the beach. We were up here for the Bridges and we got to hang out on the beach. Uh, and it was just such a beautiful place, a very artsy, kind of cool spot. And, yeah. and so for the, the music on Busy Head, um, how do you feel it? Do you feel it's shown some sort of evolution, or how is it different from you know the earlier material, like from the EP? Right, I think a lot of these songs, and the, what I like about this record is kind of a narrative of the journey I've been on for the past four years being in the music industry. So each song is kind of written at a different place and in a different mindset, and um, I think each song is about a different feeling I'm having. So there's growth in that 
I started off with Young Blood, not knowing where I was, and it kind of moves through to the touring side of thing with Mess and thinking about going home and Cynic and feeling like I'm a little jaded to what I'm finding out and hurt somebody kind of think about this relationship I'm having. And um, I just think it's it, it tells the story of a journey and there's a narrative to it, and I think that shows growth in itself for sure. Fantastic. And you did, was it just today you were filming for Late Night? Last night we did, yeah, last night we filmed for Seth Meyers. That was sick. Awesome. Yeah, it was sick. It was so cool. Um, it was really crazy to, to kind of just be on national television. We, like, watched it as a band last night in the hotel room, and it's so weird to think that, like, one of the major TV stations just has my ugly mug singing a song on it. It's crazy. And now you're on pop dust, so it's like, oh my it God. just keeps getting better. It just better. keeps getting crazy and crazy. Exponentially. My mind is blown. This is easily... Way cooler than Seth Meyers for sure. I appreciate that. Him, we're kind of rivals. Yeah, the Seth Meyers and Pop Dust rivalry goes. It goes yeah, deep, man. Tales old as time. All right. Well, uh, where should people, uh, you know, look for your music? And what should they be expecting from you next? Um, you guys can find my music. <clears throat> Jesus. Um, my my album's gonna be out. It's gonna be on Spotify, all platforms. Um, I'm gonna be on tour this fall. If you want to buy a ticket to my show, you really should. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna be coming throughout North America. We'd love to see you at a show. Um, and I'm going to be releasing a lot more music, doing a lot of touring, and, uh, you know, just going to be in your lives more. So get ready for that. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for thank you uh, so taking much. the time. Thanks for the time.